Hi, everyone. My name is Chris Martin. I'm here with my colleague, Julian Pistorius. We're here talking about Exosphere. Exosphere reimagines OpenStack Horizon for researchers and data scientists. So if you have some kind of compute intensive workload or server workload, you can run that on a big computer or a persistent computer or a disposable computer on an OpenStack cloud at your institution or a commercial cloud. Exosphere makes this really easy and includes all the batteries. You get to create instances. You get a one-click shell in your browser and a desktop environment. And you don't have to fuss with network security groups or SSH key pairs or other advanced IT concepts. Uh, you just open the app, launch your instance, and get to work. Our goal is that it just works with OpenStack Clouds. It's a client-side web application. It's a very lightweight server footprint just Nginx. Uh, our, another goal is no user interface lock-in, which means that you can use Exosphere alongside the other OpenStack interfaces like Horizon, the command line, the APIs, whatever else you have. We want it to all play nicely together. Exosphere is also free, open source, localizable, and white labelable, so you can offer a customized build to your users today. Uh, so I'm going to start a demo on creating an instance. So here I am on jetstream2.exosphere.app. Uh, Jetstream2 is a science and engineering cloud hosted at Indiana University and other places too. Um, this is a customized version of Exosphere for Jetstream2. So I'm going to log into OpenStack by clicking Add Allocation. That's what they call an OpenStack project. Um, if I wanted to log into a different OpenStack cloud, I could just uh, go to other login methods and add a raw OpenStack account. So I can enter my OpenStack credentials, username, password, etc. cetera. Uh, but we also have an integration with OpenID Connect, and that's how we add the Succeed account here. Um, so this, I'm, I already have a cookie, um, but it, it logs me in, get to choose from a project. I'll choose that. So I've got this project loaded in the user interface, and I'm going to create an instance. This takes a couple of minutes, so we're starting early. We're creating a new instance. We choose a flavor, root disk size. Uh, we can launch more than one at a time if we want. Uh, we can enable a web desktop. Uh, this is a graphical environment. So I'm just going to create this and uh, let these four instances uh, set up in the background uh, while we finish our talk, and then I'll show them toward the end. We have some new features in the last few months. So uh, Keystone multi-region support. Jetstream 2 has satellite regions. Um, in addition to the main region in Indiana, there's one in New York and Arizona and Texas and Hawaii. And uh, we're all with a common Keystone, all with a common identity management. Um, and Exosphere lets you connect to all of those now. Uh, we support Rocky and Alma Linux, both of which are successors to CentOS. We support live instance resize, uh, push button virtual clusters. This is a new experimental feature that leverages some other work uh, that's been done at IU. Um, but the upshot is that you push a button and you get your own, your own HPC cluster, which you are the master of. Uh, and it does things like elastic scaling of worker nodes as jobs are submitted and completed, OpenStack instances get created and destroyed. Uh, Guacamole desktop support now works in Ubuntu. Uh, so also, we have um, a standalone container, so you can run Exosphere yourself. This includes a proxy for API calls to OpenStack. We have a new continuous integration pipeline to build OpenStack images. Um, it runs every week now, and uh, it's, it's specific to Jetstream 2, but it's adoptable by others as well. George Mason has their own version of it. Uh, it keeps the images up to date, which keeps instance launches fast. Uh, API polling is now more efficient. It's, I think, cut down by about a third of what it used to be uh, for the same level of responsiveness, more or less. Uh, we integrate with Sentry now, so cloud operators can see errors that their users get in the user interface. Now I'm going to throw it over to Julian uh, to talk about our user interface enhancements. Thanks so much. Uh, so uh, if you could just go to the uh, um, user interface and I'll and talk and maybe point stuff out. So if we have a new project overview page, which is uh, a, a, a little bit tidier. You can see a lot more information on there. 
Uh, we have cards, for instances, volumes, IP addresses, um, public keys, and images. And then if you uh, click down into them, uh, for example, the instances one, you know, we have a new, uh, whole new list there. We're using a new data list uh, inspired by Patternfly. And uh, with bulk actions and filtering, and we'll be expanding some of these bulk actions and filtering in the future. So if you click on an instance, you can see we also have a new instance details page. This is also a bit tidier. The, the charts are different. Uh, we're using uh, better, better use of the real estate, and we put the charts right at top compared to what it was before. Um, some of the other improvements that we have is there. You can see that the uh, there's also a live graph of the GPU usage. If we were on a GPU instance, you would see uh, a GPU chart there. Uh, we have the flavor details in the page. So if you can top right under there, you can have access to how many CPUs and RAM an instance is using. And uh, let me see. Yeah, so if, if an instance fails for whatever hypervisor issue, we show the error right on here to help with uh, debugging. And we display the instance setup time. Uh, so if you click on the there, you'll see that it took two minutes to set that up. So that's probably thanks to the uh, image build pipeline as well. If we go to uh, create a new instance, you can see the we have a new instance groups um, facility that allows you, or deployers at Exos, you to specify different kinds of flavors. So whether it's a GPU flavor or a, uh, a high memory flavor or a standard flavor. And I think that's uh, yes, sort of a quick overview of yeah. So I think there's an, you can see we have general purpose, large memory, and GPU flavors. That just helps people when they're starting and says to choose the right one there. Okay. So uh, in the near future, um, as Seamart mentioned, we're we'll the primary user interface for Jetstream two. Uh, that's uh, currently being um, uh, in early operations. We'll be uh, going live very soon. Uh, George Mason is also deploying a customized version this spring for their research cloud and academic clouds. For our more um, longer term view, if you're interested, have a look at our GitLab issue tracker for the long term goal labels. And then uh, we have some excellent feedback from early JStream users. Uh, people are really finding it very useful. Uh, we hope to improve on this and iterate on the experience. Uh, also, George Mason has apparently not hated working with us, so that's also encouraging. We uh, we would love to work with any other institutions that would like to deploy this, and uh, please feel free to reach out to them to see how the experience has been so far. And um, so, Seema, just to show us that instance, I think we probably it already launched. Sure. <clears throat> so these finished set up pretty damn quick, uh, two three minutes. Uh, we've got a. Guacamole, Apache guacamole powered web shell. Um, so we've got a shell, and we also have a desktop. Uh, so these launch with just one click in your browser. People don't have to worry about SSH, VNC, or anything like that. Um, and these also have a built in file browser uploader downloader. So you can uh, transfer data to and from your instance, uh, all from your web browser as well. Uh, we provide native SSH access, uh, console access in case you break your instance's networking. You can create and attach volumes. Um, so yeah. Uh, so uh, our call to action, uh, try Exosphere. Uh, you can go to try.exosphere.app and point it at your own OpenStack cloud, or you can run it all yourself in the new Docker container. Um, if you want access to Jetstream 2 to uh, demo the new, new interface, new functionality, uh, we can help get you demo access, uh, connect you with the right people, uh, just ask us. Uh, we also, uh, we, our project lives on GitLab, so we have an issue tracker. Uh, feel free to create an issue. Tell us what you like, what you don't like. Uh, you can chat with us. Uh, you can email us. And uh, over to Julian for the rest. So yeah, we just want to thank um, Indiana University for their ongoing support uh, and uh, feedback, helping us build a better version of Exosphere uh, for other people. And we have a bunch of new contributors this time around. Andrew Gould, Jalad, Kyle, Rafael, Romina. Uh, they're making Exosphere even better. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much. <laughs>